Awareness is the only thing that you need in your life to make any changes, whether they are big or small. I've helped thousands of people all over the world do a complete life rehaul, changing every single part about their lives, changing their identity, finding their dream careers, finding their partnerships. And all of these changes really do come down to the one thing that we're going to be talking about here in this video, which is awareness. I'm also really excited to be guiding you through one of my favorite, favorite practices. So make sure that you stay all the way until the end so that I can help you have some tools that you can use to gain even more awareness in your life. So often we don't think about awareness because it's something that we all have, right? Um, you're constantly thinking, your brain is constantly moving. And when we find ourselves in those moments where we're lacking self-awareness, this is often what's happening. Let's say that you find yourself um, yelling at your child, your pet, your loved one, or acting in a way that you don't want to behave. And you're like, oh my gosh, why am I acting this way? I may have even told myself in the past that I was never going to yell again or that I was never going to do these things again. But here in this moment, I'm doing it and I don't know why and I don't know how to stop. So often we are literally being just yanked around all day throughout our days, being triggered by other people's actions, being triggered by our own actions, and just being completely spun around so much of the time. This is what it is to be uh, dysregulated and to have nervous system dysregulation, which is why so much of the videos that I post and so much of the content inside of our membership has to do with practices like somatic therapy practices that can help you actually outsmart your nervous system so that you can start to feel physically better in those moments. You cannot outsmart yourself when you are not doing nervous system regulation exercises. The more regulated your nervous system is, the easier it is to outsmart yourself, the easier it is to have more awareness in those moments when we lack awareness and don't know why we're acting the way that we're acting, et cetera, et cetera. So it's really, really important that you start to relax the mind and body in those moments that are not super heightened. So start to prioritize your rest, start to gain awareness in those moments that the stress and the pressure is not all on your shoulders. Like right before bed, challenge yourself to be aware of some of the things that you did well that day or some of the things that you didn't do so well that day. Challenge yourself as you live your life and go throughout your day to gain more and more awareness maybe start praying before meals, start setting intentions in your morning shower, start taking breaks where you take some really deep self-aware breaths. What this does is it starts to exercise that awareness muscle within ourselves. And in those moments when you're super, super dysregulated and you don't know why you're acting the way that you're acting or what you're doing or why you're doing this, that is where this these practices are really going to pay off for you so, so deeply because you'll have just a little bit of a longer fuse. You'll have just a little bit of more energy or even the ability to be aware, to watch yourself doing that thing like yelling at your pet or yelling at your child, even though you said that you would not do that anymore. So that level of awareness gives you a little bit more power. And empowerment is what we are lacking when we're doing things that we don't understand why we're doing what we're doing. Empowerment is the secret sauce to achieving anything it is that we want to achieve. If you know how to validate yourself, if you know how to empower yourself, if you... um 
embody empowerment. That means embodying a secure attachment style in relationships. It means embodying security, safety, and health in your essence and in your being. This automatically makes you charismatic, magnetic. Other people want to be around you. You are able to be aware of the opportunities that are being presented to you. And so this takes you into a completely different calibration, a completely different level of of life. And we can, often cannot even imagine or have awareness beyond our current awareness because we only have awareness of what we already do. So imagine all of the time that you spend in activities that lack awareness, whether it be scrolling on social media, comparing yourself to other people, having fake arguments in your head or going over past conversations that you had before. And you're spending all of this time in these unaware behaviors. What if you spent that time actually doing practices and doing activities that moved the needle forward in your life, that helped you feel more grounded, better, healthier, that were actually healthy for your brain and your nervous system in those moments so that you could feel so much better? Now, this is actually impossible to do. I know that so many of us are like, yes, I want to just stop being my own self-sabotage machine and start just being an empowered person, start being aware of the things that are going to help me and not aware of the things that are hurting me, like help me untangle this whole entire web. So many people start our work, this deep inner work in this mindset. And if you're in this mindset, I want you to know that I am sending you so much love because this is so uncomfortable. And sometimes it takes this level of discomfort of being in self beat up of being like, how can I be so unaware that I'm still doing this thing that I said I wasn't going to do again, it kills your self esteem. And sometimes it takes that run down of your self image and your self esteem until the point that you're like, I cannot do this anymore. I'm giving up. I'm giving up all of this stuff. It drives you into a state of overwhelm. So what that does is it spins you and spins you and spins you, and it gives you the opportunity to gain a deeper level of awareness. When you are spun around in a moment, when you're feeling super, super overstimulated, deeper awareness might sound like an expansion on the thinking that you already have. So when you, let's say, just acted in an irrational way towards your child, towards your pet, an innocent being that did not deserve your wrath, your frustration, or whatever it is, um, it can be really valuable to have a moment where you're like, oh my God, what did I just do? I feel so bad. I'm in such self beat up. I can't believe that I just did that. Allow yourself to sit in that discomfort. That awareness is okay. You do not need to escape your awareness because feeling bad about what you just did, it actually empowers you to be able to make a change. So don't stay in the bad feelings, but allow them to run through your physical vehicle, your vessel, your body, so that you can make the changes that you need to make instead of denying the lessons that are knocking on your door in the form of anger and emotion, self beat up, embarrassment, shame, guilt, all of these feelings. So often when we feel guilty or when we feel bad feelings, you want to go into a spiral of, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, or let me make this up for you or something of that nature. But that is actually not going to be the thing that removes this guilt for you. What's going to be the thing that helps you overcome this limitation that you're stuck in, this pattern that you're stuck in, is going to be the ability to shift your perspective. So when we do something that we did not mean to do, when we make a mistake, when we do something that we know is not in our highest alignment, it's natural to go into that self beat up awareness. And so I would like for you to challenge yourself to gain awareness of the different perspectives that are available. If someone were to watch you in that moment, what would they see? Maybe they would see someone who is a horrible mother, right? Maybe that's their judgment. Okay. What would someone else see? Maybe someone else would see a mother that is really, really tired today. Okay. 
what would someone else see? Maybe someone else would see a mother who's doing her best and doesn't always get it perfect, but is getting up every single day and trying again. So the more you can allow yourself to be open to the different perspectives of your behavior, the more that you can empower yourself to rise quickly into a higher state of awareness. Now you can make a mistake. You can say, wow, that's not how I want to parent my kids. That's not how I want to be a mother anymore. And also life is happening, right? Um, Perhaps this all happened in a parking lot. You need to get in your car and go into the next errand or onto the next place. Life is happening. And we cannot just stop and do some meditation and do some self-awareness exercises when we're parenting, when we're running businesses, and when we're living this fast-paced life that we call life. So that's why it's so, so important to have a daily meditation practice to do exercises or somatic therapy to help regulate your nervous system so that when life does happen and when you do get spun around and spun out, you can drive to your next errand thinking about ways that you can look at yourself through the lens of different perspectives. And this can start to empower you. When you feel more empowered, that vital life force energy that is in your heart, that is, it's like bubbling within you, like the glitter inside Side. That is what true empowerment is. We don't get that from apologizing. We don't get that from holding on to our guilt, buying gifts for, for the people that we made mistakes to, overextending ourselves, overworking ourselves, putting more pressure on ourselves because we're in that state of self beat up. We get to that next level by actually genuinely empowering ourselves. So yes, you can live life and life can be very fast paced. Let's say you get triggered. Let's say that something happens. Allow yourself to think about that. It's okay to have thoughts. Thoughts are happening, right? So allow them to happen and just observe the thoughts. Be the observer in that moment as opposed to the person that's holding on to every single little perspective that shoots into your mind. Be able to be open to multiple perspectives and find the perspective that is most empowering to you. Yes, maybe you've acted in a way that you don't want to act. Maybe you've experienced something that you don't want to experience and you want that change to happen. The thing that is going to empower you to make that change is giving yourself the grace in that moment to be like, hey, I'm doing my best in the circumstance that I'm in it makes sense for me to be acting the way that I'm acting. Any human being with human biology, human DNA, who's dealing with the stresses that I'm dealing with would have maybe forgotten about this thing or, excuse me, made this mistake or something like that. So how can I now, as an empowered person who's giving myself compassion, who's curious about ways that I can overcome this obstacle, how can I take care of myself? How can I be there for myself? Maybe it's doing a somatic exercise right there. Maybe it's practicing some separate nostril breathing, right? There's so many different exercises that you can do in inconspicuous ways that allow you to come back into your empowerment. And that is the challenge in these moments. Right now we are in a holiday season. I'm filming this on December 28th, 2023. And that means that everyone in the West is pretty much chronically I won't say chronically, but during this time of year, we tend to get very, very dysregulated. There's so much shopping, there's holiday pressure, there's memory of past holiday experiences, comparison between people and things like that. Maybe people are estranged from their family, etc. And life is happening. I love to teach ritualistic healing. I love to teach you um, really deep quantum healing where we spend two hours and just fill your soul up with that clarity that you need in order to take that next step in that next level. But we can't always do that. Sometimes your Aunt Linda says something to you about your divorce that you asked everyone to not talk about, and it triggers the crap out of you and it spins you around. So how are you going to be there for yourself 
in front of Aunt Linda who's poking at your emotions in a really mean and maybe negative way, right? So many of us have different patterns and different ways of responding in these situations. And being in your awareness and your empowerment and in your best energy is choosing to see those situations with your Aunt Linda talking about your divorce as the moment that your soul is able to practice this awareness. This is the moment. This is where the soul healing, this is where the lessons really, really happen. It's not in a Kundalini class. It's not in your therapy class or anything like that. It's in the face of someone who makes you feel uncomfortable, even when that person is yourself. It's how you act in the face of guilt or shame, or when you make a mistake, or when someone massively triggers you. These are all things that happen. There are human things that happen. And up until this point in society, up until now, because now we have YouTube and social media and people have voices and we're able to talk about these perspectives that are not always being taught in school. These perspectives that have been drowned out for centuries and centuries, thousands of years, emotional intelligence perspectives that had to be put to the side because we were advancing our society and civilization in different ways. And now we're able to actually learn how to be emotionally regulated, how to actually be emotionally intelligent. And when we are in that situation, when you're at the Thanksgiving table with your Aunt Linda, who's triggering the absolute crap out of you, that is the moment that ancestral healing happens. And it doesn't happen by you forcing Aunt Linda to be able to understand your perspective. It happens by how you observe yourself in that moment. And whatever you choose to do is completely okay because you're going to be there for yourself and with yourself no matter what. You're going to see Aunt Linda again. You're going to have another holiday. You're going to get triggered again. So whatever you do is just your data point. If you're able to gain some beautiful self-awareness in that moment and validate and support yourself, that is awesome. If you're not able to, that is also awesome. That is where you're at in this holiday season and that is okay. So collect your data Keep a journal. I love to keep a journal 365 days a year so that every year I can look back on how I felt during Thanksgiving for the past 10 Thanksgivings. Who was triggering me? What was I being triggered about? How did I respond in those situations? Would I want to respond that way again? When I responded this way, like let's say you throw your food, did that feel good for you? Did you feel go to bed that night feeling like, yes, today I did everything that was in my highest alignment. I'm giving a lot of really intense examples. And so many of us are so much more soft-spoken and would never do something like yell or throw our foods and are not that confrontational. So maybe you decide to be passive aggressive and you just don't talk to her for the rest of the night, right? So you've limited your ability, your opportunity to have fulfillment with this person because they are rough around the edges in their ability to communicate. So these are moments that you can choose your perspective. You can choose your awareness. You can choose to look at the situation and say, wow, right now the universe is presenting me with data of how incredibly emotionally intelligent I am because I know how to respect people's boundaries, even if the people around me don't know how to respect mine. So I can learn the soul lesson about myself and hold this in my heart, sink this into my DNA. This is what it is to be an ancestral healer. Sometimes it's staying quiet. Sometimes it's being the voice of love or laughter in a serious moment. Even when you're feeling serious and even when you're feeling frustrated or all of the ways that other people are feeling too, because you know how to support yourself and be emotionally intelligent and go to that meditation class later, even though these people don't. So I really, really encourage you, if you've done a yoga class, if you've done a meditation class, if you're watching this video, it is not for no reason. It's because you are meant to rise in your everyday life. It's because you are meant to be the person that inspires other people to 
be a little bit more classy, to be a little bit more composed, to be in their own light and in their own highest soul alignment and evolution as well. You are the person that can change thousands and thousands of people's lives just in how you literally sit at the table. So yeah, like mic drop, you are the person that can change thousands and thousands of lives just by how you sit at the table. Doing this work, living the work, being in the work of being in your highest alignment in every second of the day, even when you're triggered, even in those moments where you lack awareness and trying to challenge yourself to create that awareness, this changes the world. This heals your lineage. And when you heal your lineage, when you heal yourself, and when you change the world, you become unstoppable. When I first started all of the spiritual stuff, I heard about people who could talk to their higher self, who felt like they had the, a little fairy godparents on their shoulder that could help regulate them and validate them in these hard moments. That when they're sitting at that Thanksgiving table, that everyone's talking about triggering topics or fighting or politics or whatever it is, that you can have this little voice of reason that helps you and guides you and keeps you strong and in your best alignment. So you can allow yourself to think about things and to feel things because you always have your own divine guidance. I heard about this and I wanted so badly to believe in it, but I just, for whatever reason, part of me didn't. But I still, regardless, was going to work for it constantly, constantly show up every single moment, looking at every situation as a mirror of my inner world. If I'm being triggered every single day, what am I not looking at inside that is triggering me in my external environment constantly? If I'm constantly being... um upset by misogynistic com comments or something like that, what is the wound that needs healing so that I can live in a world that can coexist with these misogynistic comments so that I can start cultivating more inclusive comments and comments of love and peace and alignment? These are challenging questions for us to ask ourselves, and it takes a lot of energy and a lot of awareness. And if you are on this journey of rising into this level of who you've always been meant to be, but maybe didn't have the steps or didn't exactly know what you were meant to do, right? Some people think that being a warrior of light means coming to a Thanksgiving dinner and sitting down and setting everyone straight and bringing on a full awakening for every single person and turning every single person in your environment into the most emotionally intelligent, capable and empowered versions of themselves. But the true work is sitting down in any environment and allowing those environments to sculpt you into the most empowered version of you. This is what trauma work is as well. I'm also a trauma specialist and I don't even like to use that word and that language because so many people are shaped by our external environments. We'll go home after that really tough holiday experience and we'll say, oh, that sucked. That was so bad. But the truth of the matter is you just went through an, an experience that delivered you soul lessons and um, spiritual truths and data that you never would have learned or been able to access in any other way. So instead of looking at that as an uncomfortable and bad experience, we can start to reframe and change our perspective and change our awareness and start to cheer ourselves on when we're being triggered, cheer ourselves on when we have that moments of like, hmm, do I want to react right now or do I want to just be silent? What do I need to do? What is my boundary in this moment? Let me use this conversation, this little conversation with a random cousin that I'm never going to see again or whatever it is, let me use this as an opportunity to excel at being in my soul alignment. Let me use this as an opportunity to like be in school. The reason that I named our membership Soul School is because this universe, this life as a whole is school. 
And you can have so much fun learning. You can have so much fun expanding yourself and gaining a new skill set and expanding the skill set that you already have. And it takes this mindset of choosing to be aware in that moment. Awareness in that moment might be being aware of the fact that the relative that's massively triggering you right now has no emotional intelligence training. Maybe you can be aware of the fact that they're seeking validation on their ideas and they don't have a place to talk about all of their wacky, weird political ideas. So they're using your family time to do that. Maybe this awareness can allow you to start to shift energy in a calm and empowering and delightful way into an angle where everyone can have deeper fulfillment instead of just that person. Maybe that can be a moment where you share with this person, hey, I can see that you're really fulfilled by this conversation, but nobody else is. So let's work together in creating a fulfilling experience for everyone here. So many people are afraid to be aware because with awareness, you need to take action. It's time for you to take action. And maybe that action is not saying anything. That's okay. That is a valid action. It takes more strength to be silent than it does to speak up a lot of the time. But your awareness is your power in these moments. And afterwards, if you are in a, ooh, got an eyelash in my eye. After these experiences, if you are someone who has a delayed processing system, I am someone who has that. And so often throughout my life, I would spend, um, after having like a social exercise, I would be processing that experience after that environment. So I would go to a birthday party, let's say, and later that night, I would need to take a few hours to just process the social interactions that I, that I had. Did I do the right things? Did I say the right things? Why did I say this? Why did I do this? Whatever it is. So the more awareness that we have, the more we can stop beating up on ourselves. I was in therapy for 20 years asking therapists, how do I get my time back? How do I stop being in this processing of like, did I do the right thing? I'm constantly spending my time alone in past or future conversations that I may or may not have diagnosed with social anxiety and all of this stuff. And it took me a lot of, not a lot, actually, it literally just took me like a few minutes of sitting alone with my own thoughts and not going to anyone else who doesn't understand them nearly as well as I could in order to be able to gain the awareness that I have a delayed processing system. There is nothing wrong with me. And the reason that my brain is automatically going into this is because my brain gets a payoff from that. I'm able to gain a deeper level of awareness. I'm able to learn from these experiences and kind of play around and see what perspective would empower me most in the past, in the future, and so forth. So every single thing that we do, whether you are yelling at an animal that doesn't deserve it, whether you are breaking the law, doing something absolutely horrible that you would never, ever repeat to anyone, or if you're just doing like you finish the bag of chips, even though you said that you wouldn't do that, whatever you are doing that is out of your awareness is serving a purpose that comes from your subconscious mind. So if you are doing things that habit, how do I say this? Let's let's just start with a little repeat. Whatever you are doing that is out of your awareness is coming from the subconscious mind. When you go for those sweets, even though you said to yourself that you were not going to do that anymore, that is a subconscious impulse and a subconscious urge. The reason that we have these subconscious impulses and urges is because we have needs. Our body has needs. Our mental body has needs. Our energy body has needs. We have so many needs. Taking care of your needs as an adult human can sometimes feel like a full-time job when you really have awareness of what all of your needs actually are. We've been taught that our needs are food, 
water, shelter. But the truth is, is that if you give those three needs to any biological human on this planet of any culture, civilization, or environment, or tradition, that person will not be able to biologically develop and evolve the way that humans have been designed to biologically evolve. Food, water, shelter are not even the basic needs that the human brain needs in order to mature until the age of seven. And so I don't know where this got so trendy and so popular that if you have food, water, shelter, that you have everything that you need. This is not true. Every single human, physiological, biological human needs physical touch. If you do not pick up a baby, that baby can develop severe disorders. The nervous system needs to co-regulate with another body and with another person. So many of us in our modern times co-regulate with another person by getting validated from the content that we see online by spending time like this right now, we're co-regulating together. But you can also co-regulate by just being in the same space as another person, um, sitting in a coffee shop where other human beings are sitting Like your aura just needs to be around another person's aura as an adult. And this is a need that adults have that many of us who work from home, who run our own businesses, who work virtual jobs or whatever it is, we don't understand this need. We have not been taught about it. And we find ourselves um, completely strung out with our habits, unable to control our habits in lack of awareness and we don't know why and it's because your soul is screaming for specific needs those needs might be physical contact with another person or just being around another person it might be talking like just talking about literally nothing this is a need that women have this is part of female biology it's not part of male biology this is why so often people say that women gossip right that women just sit around and talk about what's going on around the neighborhood and things like that that is actually some a part of the female brain that is so useful and has been developed for our survival. It is a subconscious part of the mind that we need because the divine feminine is able to collect data, have incredible pattern recognition, compare and contrast this data with other divine feminine women within the community so that they can best protect and guide the community as a whole. It is so, so valuable for women across all time and space to be able to gossip about health issues, about how we're feeling, about little things that you may or may not think are a symptom or whatever it could be. This is the reason that we have an organic label in the U.S., Our entire Western civilization would not care at all about labeling food if it wasn't for groups of women that have been connecting with each other and talking about, hey, all of us feed our kids Cheez-Its and all of our kids have autism, cancer, and all of these chronic illnesses. Sorry, Cheez-It, not trying to hate on you, just giving a random example. Um, There's so many communities of women that have literally protected their lineage, protected their children and our civilization as a whole because they had the courage to just sit around, have some tea and talk about random little things or cry about how frustrated they are that their kid has not yet spoken and maybe helped the development of the autism associations and special needs development in our entire civilization. So it is so, so important for people to be aware of the things that are bothering them. And it is also so, so important for people to be aware of the needs that we have as individuals and how these needs support us in our communities and in our societies at large. We all know that food is a need that we have, that water is a need that we have, that But shelter, I love sleeping outside, right? 
what is shelter necessarily? Shelter in this day and age might be having a community of people that I can rely on when I have a bad day. Shelter in this day and age might be having practices like quantum healing practices, meditation practices, the water meditation practice that I'm going to share with you right here in this video that can really deeply ground you when you feel like you are at your wit's end. This is what it can mean to shelter yourself, to care for yourself in this day and age. Our needs are so, so different. And the way that our society is structured is not community-based, is not social-based. So many people are developing incredibly high um, illnesses, chronic illnesses, rates of cancer, suicide, all of these things are through the roof. And it comes down to the fact that we are experiencing higher and higher of levels of stress as a whole. These stress levels come down to the fact that we don't know how to be in community with each other, that we don't know how to change our lens of awareness, how to empower ourselves when we feel triggered. These this lack of information is not only hurting ourselves on an individual level, but on a collective level too. And if you choose to regulate your nervous system, and if you choose to be an embodiment of divinity, of love, of creativity, and all of the good glittery stuff that is in your soul, you are naturally going against the grain of society. Our society is structured in a very, very masculine based way. And I'm not just saying this because of my thoughts or my theories. If you look through the way that we've structured the workday, medicine, food distribution, absolutely any sort of organization in our society has been structured to appeal to men. And this neglects half of the society, half of the population that um, makes the world go round, right? Women are nurturers. Women are the beings that get to use that awareness and cultivate that loving circle with your Aunt Linda who's sharing racist comments at the table or whatever it could be. So it is so, so important for women to know how to meet our needs, not just for all people, how to, not just for all people to know how to meet everyone's needs, which is so valuable, but for women to know how to meet our needs. So a lot of the time, women are experiencing the highest levels of chronic stress in our entire society, especially marginalized women, but women as a whole. That's because we're living in a society that was not structured for us. And we're following habits that are aimed to reduce this amount of chronic stress that's just accumulating and accumulating over and over with every interaction. And then those habits make us feel guilty, make us feel shameful. Maybe it's the habit of yelling at someone who doesn't deserve it, doom scrolling, being in bed way too long. You know that you're doing things that are not building your self-esteem. So how can we stop this cycle? How can we stop this pattern. It takes some radical self-acceptance. It takes some acceptance of the environment that we're living in, as well as who you are, as well as your awareness of yourself as a woman. Instead of seeing yourself doing these habits like doom scrolling or whatever things that you're doing, instead of seeing that as a bad thing that you're doing, See it as what it actually is, an act of desperation. Your soul is in an act of desperation. Your soul is feeling so chronically stressed about all of the things that have accumulated that the only solution that seems like it would work next is that cookie. It is that opening that social media and just doom scrolling. It's lashing out. It's making an irrational choice or whatever it is. This makes sense. It makes sense. Any human being that is dealing with the external factors and stressors and pressure that women today are dealing with would have the same response. 
it makes sense for us to be overweight. It makes sense for us to not feel like we're in our highest alignment. It makes sense for us to laugh at women who talk about living in their dream life or romanticizing their life or whatever it is. How are we supposed to romanticize our lives when this is what life feels like? It is hard to be a modern woman. And if you've incarnated here in this planet and this era, it is because your soul is not weak. The habits that you consistently find yourself falling into, it's not because you're weak. It's because your soul is desperate to get its needs met. And the more that we learn how to be proactive, the more that we learn how to meet those needs, set up your week so that you get to gossip with some friends, get to hug people, get to do something creative, right? Like the brain has so many needs. What if you have the need to create something every single week? Maybe your whole life would change by you literally just picking up a sourdough baking hobby. It really takes just one degree of awareness to be able to give ourselves that radical self-acceptance that your soul really deserves. so that you can start to show up in your highest alignment. It really takes just one degree of awareness, which is so powerful and so, so beautiful. I'm not saying that it's easy, but we can start to build this momentum of self-empowerment. And that's something that no one can ever take away from you. Nothing that anyone ever says or leaves as a comment on one of your posts or does to you. Like, I've literally been robbed and people can't take my self-empowerment away. When I was robbed, my first thought was like, oh, thank God they robbed someone who knows how to literally recreate everything that they just took. Can you imagine that? being so healed that even when someone harms you, you rise. That takes some serious soul strength and it does not happen in one day. And it doesn't happen from signing up to that next yoga class. It happens from what you do off the mat. It happens when you give yourself the permission to start thinking a little bit differently, to start seeing yourself through a different perspective. Awareness is hard to develop. If it was easy, if it was easy, <laughs> it would be sold in um, stores, right? But it's easier to sell all of the things that block our awareness, all those toys, all those flashy materials, purses, bags, cars, all of the stuff that block our ability to really be aware of what really matters. Awareness is something that we can practice, and I love to practice it through doing a water meditation. This is a meditation that I can kind of customize and cater to anything that I desire. So if I'm feeling really triggered or if I just need some empowerment in my body and in my soul, I can cater this or customize this meditation to that. And I'm really excited to be sharing that with you here today. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing. All you need is a glass of water. And I encourage you to use a glass, not a plastic cup, 
to try to reduce the amount of microplastics and chemicals that are in our system because these toxins and chemicals, they really do block our ability to be aware. It is scientifically proven. And your awareness, I know that we've been talking about the conscious mind and the subconscious mind and all of these things, but all of this awareness comes from a gland in the brain that you can see this gland with your naked eye. It's right in the center of the brain. It's also called the third eye or the pineal gland. And when we take in all these toxins, toxic thoughts, anger, stress, junk food, doom scrolling, all of this stuff, we're causing damage to that gland. You can actually see this in an autopsy of a person. That is how powerful this work is. So I'm really excited to share this meditation with you because this meditation helps us reverse the damage that is happening to our brain that is blocking our own awareness, that is blocking our ability to be our own rescuer, our own healer, our own guide, to be able to meet our own needs, the needs that we're aware of and the needs that we're not yet aware of. Every single day, your meditation should be designed to help promote the healing of this gland of awareness in your mind because your awareness is the key. Your awareness is the thing that can change anything for you, that can connect you with opportunities that you never thought were possible for you that can empower you to have the skills to be able to overcome absolutely anything and achieve your wildest dreams. It all comes down to your awareness. This is why I teach both holistic healing as well as quantum sciences and quantum healing, because you need the interdisciplinary work. You need for it to work together in order to be a master of yourself. Imagine focusing on your health without ever once looking at your diet or your food or what you're eating, right? Personal trainers don't just help you with your exercises. I used to be a personal trainer in the past. They don't just help you with your exercises. They also help you with your diet because we need this interdisciplinary approach to be able to be in true self-mastery. So take your glass filled with water. I have some tart cherry juice in my water that actually helps with nervous system regulation, helps with, um, anti it promotes antioxidants, which supports cell turnover, which actually supports that third eye and all of your cells in your body in regenerating, getting rid of those toxins and getting, helping you hold that higher frequency and being on that higher level. So this meditation can be as short or as long as you need it to be. What you're gonna do is just hold the water with both of your hands like this. You're gonna close your eyes gently. And with your eyes closed, you're gonna turn your inward gaze up at your third eye or that pineal gland region, looking upwards at that inside of your forehead. Very, very gently, not straining the eyes. We're relaxing the face muscles, relaxing the forehead, and relaxing the body. And we're also relaxing the shoulders away from the ears. Allow your cup of water to fall to the area right about where your sternum is in the center of your chest. And just hold the water here against your heart chakra. This is the most powerful energy center in the body. And as we give awareness to this energy center, it illuminates the rest of our body, igniting our cells with awareness and truth, promoting healing, growth, and fulfillment across all of our cells and all of our energy bodies. So focusing on the heart chakra, imagine a white light extending from your torso, from the area between your lungs, to the front, back, and sides of your body. Expanding with each breath, 
in all directions, expanding your energy, your cosmic field, your unique blueprint. And just bring your mind's awareness into the concept of water. Water that is so easily programmable with our intentions, spells, and words. Water that has been here on this planet, witnessing the creation of all living things and beings, of all ideas that have ever existed. Every molecule of water embodies pure grounding energy, as well as cosmic knowledge and wisdom. This water gives birth to plants, opening up flowers that have been struggling to bloom. This water carves rocks, creates roaring waterfalls that you can't even scream over. So just take a moment to be aware of all of the vastness that water is. This element, this force that is within us and around us and available to us. Joining our awareness of our own divine light with our awareness of the divine power of water. You can feel this alignment, this infusion of grounding fulfillment. Taking a few breaths. Bring your cup to your lips now. Bringing your intention of groundedness, clarity, peace, or relaxation, whatever it is that you need in this moment, we're going to be bringing that into our body with a sip of water. So as you take a small sip of water, just hold that water in your mouth. Bring your awareness to how it feels to wet your lips with your intention, with your cosmic knowing. And as you pass this water into your mouth, down your throat, allowing yourself to swallow, just notice the seeds that are planted within your body. And as you drink even more and more of this water, taking a few more sips now, allow those seeds to be watered with your energy, your intention, your self-love and validation. Being a master of yourself doesn't mean that you have to become anyone else. Being a master of yourself comes down to your mastery of how you utilize the elements like water, your voice, your awareness. Thank you so much for taking the time to elevate with me here today, to be the change in your life and in the world. I hope this practice carries you into every level that your soul desires and I will see you next time.